be an actor, you want to be an actor. You have to love it. It was mind-boggling what happened to me and all of a sudden. It was very surreal. What were the things you learned? Just about what I was capable of, what a person is capable of and how, how far you can go. But all of a sudden I'm saying, no, no, I'm going to be artistic, I'm going to take a risk. It's like, oh no, you know, but yeah, it a little like bit a different. Is it like a thrill? Totally thrill. Yeah. Scary. What do you love the most about acting? I think it's the exciting and nature of not knowing what the next thing might be. to Foreign Influence. Today we have someone that you might know. He's an Australian actor, an award-winning one of stage and screen, Vince Colosimo. Vince, thank you so much for being a part of our show. Foreign Influence, how do you know it's the foreign, I'm an influencer of the foreigners. That's fantastic. Absolutely. I love that introduction. That's nice why to be you're here. here. Nice to be here, thank you. What was it like for you growing up in an Italian family with three siblings? I was born here in Australia and um, uh, my parents came in the, in, in the 50s. I'm a twin, um, we're not identical, I wish we were, we're not identical. I have an older sister, a little sister that passed away when I was very, very young, a long, long time ago. So yeah, that's where the three siblings come from, but otherwise it was five of us in the family. It was tough, but also I have memories that I would not change for anything. We grew up in, um, in uh, the inner suburbs of, of North Carlton, North Fitzroy, around that area. We lived a bit of the street life as we were growing up. We were in the, in, in the, in the burbs and also out and about in the city of Melbourne and uh, we seem to know it very well and people know our faces and stuff. And being in, in, in film and in television and, and starting out like that, it was, it was an experience that um, if I could have some of that time back, maybe, yes, but really looking back on it, I, there's nothing I would really change because it was an experience and I wouldn't be where I am today without it. So, um, you know that old saying that if, if you go and change something, maybe the, the end thing might change as well. I wouldn't want that. I'm content of where I've gone so far and I just hope for a happy and prosperous future still to come. The last part of it. <laughs> Absolutely. By the way, just before you shared with me your beautiful original name. My only name, Melania, but my name is Vincenzo. I love uh, it. I've been called Vince or, or Chenz as my friends call me. But yeah, it's Vincenzo Colossum. I never had a, never had a middle name. But in our day, and, and I don't know if you guys are the same, but uh, the Italians, very traditional. And so my sister was born first. There was no name books back then where my mum and dad were looking through the names. Oh, that'd be or nice. the so internet. Nice. Or the internet, anything like that. So basically my sister got my father's mother's name, so my grandmother. I got my dad, my grandfather's name. My brother got the other grandfather. And my little sister got the other grandmother. And that's how it was. It was, it was very simple. No middle names. We were just named after our grandparents. Incidentally, there's a few Vinces and there's a few Tonys and there's... A, couple of Rachels in my family. What traditions do you remember that your family followed? Italian traditions when you were growing up? We were quite religious. We did the whole, the whole communion, baptism, all that sort of stuff that we, we find. And when I went to the first time in Italy, and I was in the early 20s when I went, the one experience I, I found out was that we are a lot more traditional here in Australia okay. than they even were there. They progressed a lot more, in, even in the south of Italy. And that was really interesting because when you think about it, well, the people that came here and they immigrated here, they came with what they had and they remembered what they had and they kept it and they, they, pers they, yeah, they, they preserved it. They tried to preserve it, it. Yeah. preserved it and it's still you know, like the weddings and baptisms and things of traditional nature, like, you know, preserving foods and, and making this and making this. They're a lot more traditional here than they even are back there. They try to maybe retain their cultural identity, make them feel closer. So you'll go down, you'll go down like one of the roads, the Sydney Road or in, in Brunswick or Coburg and you'll and you'll see shops that look like they're from the 60s and 70s, but um, they're pretty much up to date, really, with what everything you need, your bonbonieri and all your clothes and everything, everything you need. So, and I sort of like, it's a bit quirky, but I sort of like that we went to Italian school, so we had to, you know, my first language was Italian. It wasn't until I went to school that, um, uh, you know, at the age of four or five, that they said, you know, I think 
I think you know, the, the boys should start talking a little bit more English English at school because they're struggling at school. And that, there was a note that was sent to my parents and I've had to bring it home so that my parents saw it and they had to sign it and I had to bring it back. And, and the irony there was that uh, my father couldn't read the, the writing so he just had to sign it and I gave it back. You know? And it's, it's sort of very odd. Yeah. But that was back in the... Yeah. You know, in the 70s when um, yeah, times were very different then. You know, there were interpreters and there weren't people that were, well, what, what nationality would you like? And what nationality would you like? You know, it was one and that's it. And, uh, and because of that, it was tough and it was a harder, harder road to travel. But, you know, we got through and it uh, only made us stronger. How did you get into acting? Back when I was in, in, in year seven, which is as, an, as a 12-year-old, these people were scouting schools in the inner yeah. suburbs, boys' schools, to find new faces to be, you know, Italo-Australians in this particular film called Moving Out. They came to uh, my school and, and then they just chose kids out of the lunchtime on the football field or playing or whatever it was. And they said, can you stay after school? And they took photos of us and they questioned us. And anyway, they came back again and, and they minimised the people that they wanted to see and I became one of them. And then from there, we cut two years later and we're making this film. It took that long to, for them to raise enough money to make this film called Moving Out, which is, is um, we had like 40 years, right, a 40 year uh, anniversary just yeah. um, a couple of months ago. And the director was there and the writer, uh, Jan Sardi and Michael Pattinson and Jane Valentine who, who produced it. And it was quite, it was quite emotional actually because I brought my son and, and to see the film, he hadn't seen it before and he really liked it. And, and, and we was, it was playing in the, in the cinema uh, in, in the city because this particular film is on film. So you still need a projectionist to, you know, swap the, the, the film rolls over and, and, and it was amazing watching it on film and, and just watching the film and, and see where what myself and everyone else have come from and, and, and where we've gone to, you know. Not only myself, but the director saw it in that, like it was his first film, the writer's first film, the producer's first film, and most of the cast, you know, the young, the young cast, we were all first timers as well. And the beautiful thing is that it's, it still holds up today, you know, this, this particular film. It's about fitting into society as, a, as an Italo Australian wanting to be Australian and then moving out to the suburbs when he's finally made his friends and his parents want to move him to the biggest suburbs and he doesn't want to go, he wants to stay in the inner suburbs. So it's all that clash about identity and, and fitting into this culture and being an Australian kid. Although when you go home, it's back to, you know, Little Italy and, and there's this fight and struggle about it. You know, so, um, the contrasts, the, yeah. Yeah, those, those um, I suppose those uh, themes still... Are relevant, through today, yes. Very relevant today, you know, in, 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 in Australia, so to speak. So that's what happened, you know, I got, I got into it that way. Then made with the same people, I'd made a second film about a, a year and a half later called Street Hero, which was a little bit more um, uh, mainstream, a little bit more, you know, had a lot of music. Paul Dainty was one of the producers who's also a musical entrepreneur here in Australia. So he connected us with a lot of Australian bands and we had a whole album, still an album. Yeah. And that was, again, early 80s, that was about 84. Were you given any lessons? <coughs> oh, don't even start me there. I had to go. I did drama. I did because I failed drama in high school. <laughs> I, I, I want you to because it was a mucky. Because I went to a boys' school, and it was all about fooling around when I went to drama, uh, and I fooled around a bit too much. And <laughs> the direct, the um, teacher failed me. But anyway, that's a long story. When we started doing these workshops with these people making this film, they would uh, have me in speech because I was even the way I spoke was. Um, wasn't clear enough. I had, you know, sort of little problems with the way I spoke. I used to say think and fought rather than think and it's H and I used to not pronounce things clearly enough. And and back then they really wanted you to. And, and yeah. it was sort of was a good good thing for me to do was go to lessons with yeah. speech therapists and um, not that I wasn't understood. I was understood, but, it, yeah. I, but still yeah. they wanted to be a lot more clear because it meant to be a leading role in this film. So I did that. I had to go to gyms and I had to uh, do drama classes and all those things were involved in. Did you like it? Do you remember? I did like it. It was it was fun. It was exciting. And some of the stuff, some of the stuff, special. some of the stuff yeah. made me feel like I was still going to school, and I just wanted to start this film. Yeah. And the process seemed to take a long, long time. When you're that age, everything takes a long time. You know, yeah. you, you just want to go. Things move, move fast. You know, these days I wish I had that much time to prepare for a film. You know, it'd be great. It was mind-boggling what happened to me, where we went to, and, uh, and making these films, and all of a sudden, the cinema openings and doing articles and, you know, your face on, on, on newspapers and face on the TV and then going to the cinema and seeing your head on the screen. It was, um, it was very surreal. I come from a big family and, uh, you know, there was, it was, it was a sort of funny attitude amongst the family. They're very proud and they were like, yeah. what's going on? My parents were a little bit, like, confused about the whole thing, but, were you know, they there was supportive? good people. Yeah, of Once course they, they realised it of was course, going of to course be they, a of career? Of course they, well, they didn't know it was going to be a career. They thought it might, yeah. might be a bit of... 
flash in the pan. Who knows? Yeah. We don't know what, what was going to go. As far as I was concerned, I liked playing sport and girls. That was it. Yeah. You know, I, I had nothing <laughs> else in my life, and that was it. And eating. This little slice came out, and and, and I decided to, when I finished high school, I decided that I, I, I wanted to pursue it. And then I think if I was to pursue it, I had to go to drama school. So I auditioned for all the different drama schools. Funny enough, uh, I got into the VCA, not realising how how tough that really was to get into two years later. You know, that was how lucky I was to have got in. I'm still, yeah, well, one, of, still, it, still one of the yeah. youngest actors to, to have ever gone through. I, I, I got in there at the age of um, just on 18 and, 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 and uh, graduated at 20. So, and these days, they always wanted people to be really older and have a little bit more experience in the theatre before going to the VCA and studying drama. But that's a long story too. I finished that and then and got myself an agent and, uh, and we cut to, here we are. Who was your biggest role model in life? Well, at first it was obviously the people that, that came to me and, 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 you know, I could only rely on them. There was the director, Michael Pattinson, who today remains a really, really great friend of mine. Yeah. Jan Sardi, who wrote the film, uh, uh, he's, he's still, he, he was a big influence back in those days. His, his brother, Peter Sardi, who played my father in the first film. And then obviously you start to meet actors along the way and uh, 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 a great actor, a Scottish actor by the name of Frank Gallagher, who passed away now, was a real, like, uh, role model for myself. He would always give me advice and we worked a, a, a lot together. But even back at school, it was scary when I was in, in VCA was being the youngest and I felt that I was so far behind with everyone else because they, as far as text work and understanding of, of, of theatre and understanding of, of, of scripts and plays and I didn't even know who Shakespeare well, was. I had no young. Shakespeare experience. Yeah. I had no Ibsen Chekhov. Yeah. You know, I didn't know who they were. So I had to do a lot of work outside of the school just to catch up a little bit. But when I got that confidence and when I found myself on the stage and I was doing what they were doing, I felt, I felt quite confident. I felt that, that, that you know, and it did, took a little while, but when I understood what I was doing and, and, and I communicated, I was able to communicate on, on stage and to the audience, I felt like they weren't doing it right and I felt like I was, I, I was, I was really good. And so my confidence was built and, and I sort of rode on that for a little while without becoming too cocky because that easily happens as well. But just stay real and stay, keep your feet on the ground. And, with my family, that was quite easy to do. You know, uh, you go home to your mum and dad, and you're still a little kid. Yeah. Doesn't change. It never changes. You know, so they keep your feet solidly on the ground, and, and the big family does as well, and friends. How do you think your upbringing affected the roles that you took in your acting career? Well, because my parents aren't <clears throat> of, of the artistic background, you know, they, they were you know working class people who came from from Italy to Melbourne to basically find work and survive and, you know, and build a family up together. And, you know, this was like, what, a risk? A taking a risk on one of the sons and taking, you know, sending him off to, no, no, this is not what we wanted. We wanted him to go to school and, I don't know, maybe be a, a doctor, who knows, whatever, you know. That was never going to happen. But, um, you know, whatever. I suppose it would have been tough for them because I think, you know, as your parents do and, and their parents before them, to take the risk and come to a new country, they did it for the next generation. Yeah. You always want to do something for the next yeah. generation. And, and because they felt that they'd taken the risks, and, and you know, even looking back at it now, you know, the massive, massive thing that they did, which I'll never, and, and hopefully no one in our generation or in the next generation, will never have to do again, which, which is immigrate to another country, learn the language, you know, risk not even being, you know, uh, becoming citizens, and, and then building a family, building a future. And, and back and then there wasn't much information on TV or the internet that you could look up no where internet, you're actually no internet, going. Yeah. The risks that they took and what they did is something they thought, I don't want my son or my kids to have to go through that now. I want them to live an easier life. Mm. But all of a sudden I'm saying, no, no, I'm going to be artistic. I want to take a risk. Mm. It's like, oh, no. you know. But, but they were... Um, they were pretty good about it. They were really good about it, especially when they saw there was a little bit of um, success in what we yeah. were doing. There was stuff that was being shown and we were making stuff. So it wasn't all for nothing. And I went to college and if nothing else, I learned a lot about myself in college. And what were the three, things you learned? Just about what I was capable of, what a person is capable of and how, how far you can go, how far you can stretch yourself. You know, being an actor, you, you're pushing yourself in a whole lot of different directions. And, and if, you, so if, you have, if you doubt that, it's very, very hard. You have to be open. You have to be ready for anything and everything, which is what makes it so exciting. You don't know what your next role will be. And learning and understanding how to get to that, learning, getting the tools to, to help you. Because I think college can give you the tools. Yeah. 
but to be an actor, you ought to want to be an actor. You have to love it. You have to, um, especially in this country, because there's nothing else. You know, if you people come up to me and say, "Hey Vince, uh, I've got a son or I've got a daughter. They're really, really good. Can you have a look at them? Do you think they should be able to tell them? Give them some advice." I go, "No, nah, they shouldn't." They go, "Why?" I said, "Because if they want to be actors, they've got to want it. It doesn't matter what anyone else says." Yeah. And they've got to love it so much that nothing or no one will ever get in their way and they will pursue it. Because you have to love it in itself. Because forget the fame, forget the fortune, forget the notoriety. It's, it's none of, it, it's, it's, you do it because you love it. What do you love the most about acting? I think it's the exciting uh, nature of, of not knowing what the next thing might be. And I've always liked the fact the next role will be so a little like bit a different. Is it like a thrill? Totally thrill. Yeah. Scary, but also not knowing where your next role is going to come. Sometimes you think the last job you did is so going to be the very, very. Is this going to be the very last time I ever work? And then something comes up, you, you try out for something else, and all of a sudden you get a phone call and you go and do something overseas or whatever. And that's really exciting. You don't know where it can take you, or, or who's going to notice you, and who's going to pick you up. When I think about it, and over my career, and I think about some of the roles I've played, where pardon the language, but when I've played an absolute low life arsehole prick, and then. People tell me how good I am at it. You know, it's like, what other profession in yeah. the world can that happen in? Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. You know, I've thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. It doesn't, yeah. you know. And this is all it does. You know, I mean, get awards for it. It's like, <laughs> for being an arsehole. And it's like, you're a great arsehole, you know. Who do you think you're talking to, mate? Eh? Hey? Who do you think you're talking to? I'm Neville Bardos. You remember that? Or has your fucking memory lapsed, you fucking idiot? What? Who do you think you're talking to, mate? Oh, sorry. Oh, was I being rude? Yes, mate. You were being very fucking rude. You fucking dickhead. You want to make some money, you make it yourself. Get him a drink, Nick. And behave. I said behave. Fucking idiot. Do you believe that's fucking true or what? But seriously, Nev, like, how you holding for cash? I'm, I'm a bit bloody broke. Listen, mate. What are you talking about? Cash. There's no cash here. Here, there's no cash, all right? Cash, no. Robbo? No cash. What's the difference between performing in the TV series versus a movie, comedy versus dramatic <clears throat> acting, and which do you prefer? Bottom line to that is I prefer a really good script. It doesn't matter. That, oh, there's always a script. The start of anything, the heart and soul of any piece of work, whether it be television, whether it be cinema or film, or, you know, motion pictures. Or I suppose when you have, when, you, when you're doing a play or you're doing a, a, a story created for the cinema or, or a particular film, a two-hour film, there's a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's sort of wrapped up and, and it has a whole arc and your character has, yeah. a, you see where your character goes and where he comes from. And, and so you can compact it all, so to speak, and, and really know how to jump into it and, and where you go and, 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 and where it goes to and how it finishes. So where you want to get to, what your objectives are in, in a particular thing. When it's a television series, you just, sometimes you never know what's going to happen because you, sometimes the scripts aren't written and, and, uh, yet or, or they haven't been told to you. you know? yeah. so, so the ongoing things are always... Making them work is very interesting. I think that's really tough and hard work too and, and being able to show up every single day and, and make your character interesting and right for your character. That's, that's tough. It's something I haven't done a lot of because I'd rather have the beginning, middle and end and then move on <laughs> to the next thing, you know. Or do a six weeks of seven or eight weeks of six episodes or ten episodes or something and then move on as well, which I've done a lot of too. Comedy against uh, drama, again, it's about the script and, and, and people think, you know, they'll say, they'll say things like, oh, you must have had a lot of fun doing that, the Womp Boy or whatever, the comedy stuff that I've done. And I said, well, you know, that was probably one of the hardest things to ever do because to make comedy work and make that, you know, make that come across on, on film and, and hopefully the timing and all that that, that that works on screen later on, that's a tough job making those things work and not easy and sometimes not really enjoyable either. To, but when you get it, it is. Compared to drama, where drama is, you know, you know when you're, when you're hitting it well, you know, you feel it sometimes, you know you can feel it. There's goods, there's pros and there's cons about both types of work and... and, and I really love working with great directors. I love working with great, you know, uh, you people that I've never worked with before and, and people that I have worked with before. The familiarity is great. The people you love 
working with and friendships that you make along the way. I'm the type of most people tell you that, you know, you've got to go to work and you've got to have a bit of a laugh. You've got to have, you got to smile, you've got to laugh because what's the point otherwise? Yeah. Of course, it's a time to be serious and get you it down. You want to stay in the moment. Of course you've got yeah. to stay in the moment. That's very, very important. But, you know, you have to release too and you have to um, take yourself, take, be serious about your work, but don't take yourself too seriously. I think you just get out there and, and enjoy. And Because usually when you're enjoying it, hopefully your audience will be enjoying it as well. Yeah. If you're having a tough time, they're going to have a tough time watching you. And so um, I like to, uh, well, I've stuck with that and I try to believe in that as much as I can. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your family. How do your children <coughs> feel about their dad being in movies? I don't think they're really fussed by it, you know what I mean? I, at times, you know, it, it wasn't until... Um, I remember once when my daughter was really, really young, she was like two or three, and she was watching television, and uh, a nad came up with something I was in. And I was like, I was wondering what she was going to be, how she was going to react to what was on television, because she watches, she's been watching it with the kids, and all of a sudden she sees it. And I go, look, 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 it's my it's on TV. And she just got up and walked away. It's like, <laughs> and I was shattered. I was absolutely shattered. Interesting <laughs> reaction. <laughs> my partner at the time said, don't worry about it, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. And I was like, bro, I was absolutely shattered. <laughs> And then, like, so that didn't mean anything. Yeah. Most of the stuff I've done is like kids can't, you know, it's not really, they're not really kids' shows. Yeah. They've always got to be 15 years and over. So I waited, I waited for my daughter to become 15 before she could see a lot of the stuff that I did. And now she has a little bit more of an understanding. And it's not until people sometimes tell her, is that your dad? Is that your dad? You, come and so she feels, she gets a little bit chuffed about it. Both my partner and yeah. her mother were actors as well. We were actors. Whenever she was seen with her parents, people would look at us and, you know, oh, it's his daughter and stuff. So. That'd be tough. That'll always be tough. Overall, she's come through it. I know she doesn't want to be an actress, that's for sure. But um, and I'm very glad about that. Why? Uh, because I, oh, look, I'd always, I'd never stop her doing what she wants to do. Never ever stop anyone doing what they love and what they want to do. But it's a tough gig. It really, really is a tough gig. And I'm saying, if you want a tough gig, it's great, but it's tough. It's not easy. Again, it's got to be a passion of yours, and, and no, no one's, ever, no one can stop you. So it's never going to be my decision. It's always going to be the person's decision. How about your son? Does he want to follow in your footsteps? No, it, well, he's eight years old. Whenever we ask, whenever his mother or I ask him what he wants to do, his first answer is a school teacher for some reason. He wants to sort of teach. I don't know why, but he wants to teach. He's a great kid. He, and look, that could be anything Obviously, they want. I know, really I know that my, teacher, you know, my, yeah. both my kids could just do anything they really want to do if they want to do it. And, and, and an opportunity that they have, you know, in this country and in schools that they go to, you know, they can do pretty much whatever they, their heart desires. Let's talk about your latest movie, Wog Boys Forever. Oh yeah, no, that's, a, yeah. that's the third one in the, uh, in the Wog Boys uh, yes. catalogue. Yeah. I don't know if there'll be another one, but then, look, who knows, there might be. What it's was the inspiration for it? <coughs> the other two. I did one the first one in 2000, and then, you know, we had also done stage shows prior to that, but then there, and we did stage shows between the first and the second film as well. Ten years have gone by, so we said we'll do a, a second. So we did the return of the, 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 the Wog Boys, Kings of Mykonos. So we went overseas and did a film and partner here and over there. And then we said, we'll do the next 10 years, we'll do the third one. Because everyone kept asking years, when are you doing this? When are you doing this? Was, there was a want for it out there. But then COVID came, so it was meant to be 2002, 10 and 2020. Yeah. COVID came, so it, was, it put us back a bit. So it was released this year. And I yeah, love the movie. Oh, I man. absolutely loved oh, yeah. it. Like, look, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's a fun film. It's, it's, you know, you can go into the cinema and you can actually... Be quite tired you, and just want you know have a bit of entertainment and, and yeah. thrown at you and, and it is a bit quirky it's a little bit slapstick it's fun and though Australian, I, I enjoy, and I enjoy so it Australian. I enjoy it I, it is very yeah. Australian and I, I must admit that going in to see this this particular film I hadn't seen it until the uh the whole thing till opening night and we sat there and I, I quite enjoyed it myself we had a good time making it it's third of, it's an installment that is part of the, the trilogy and not many people get to make those sort of things no. in, in this country when you know Nick Janopoulos and his production team and you know the support that he's had and it wasn't easy to get into the support but he was able to make that third film and um and i'm just glad i was i was a part of it a big part of it and it wouldn't be a real party unless the wog boy's old mate frank de benedetto was there too Steve, it's the og now you're just a sad and lonely w-o-g you know who jumped in my cab today hey claire she dumped you after a week didn't she yeah, but you know what she said? You know, you actually deserve longer than a week. No, she was coming on to you. Really? Yes, dickhead! The are going into that nightclub privilege. Welcome to my big fat wog nightmare.
Vince, thank you so much for being part of Foreign Influence and we wish you all the best for the future. Like I said, I love to be an influence and thank you very much. It's been enjoyable and, uh, and good luck with it. Thanks, Attic Films, for um, lending us this beautiful studio. Bye-bye.